Okay, in today's video, we are going to look at creating an entire scene in DAZ. Now, fair warning, this can suck up a lot of your computer's juice. <laughs> it can slow things right down, especially when it comes to rendering. Um, I tend to render my backgrounds separately and my models separately so that I can work on them individually, but you can absolutely render as an entire once off scene. So first things first, I've actually changed the ratio of my um, working viewpoint viewport here. It's now 16 by nine rather than six by nine or nine by six, whatever I had it at initially. This is just so that I've got enough material basically to work with. If I want to do a print wrap in the future, I want to have enough backgroundy stuff. So I would place my model more over to one side. Then I've got all this extra stuff to do things with. Or if I'm making a piece of artwork, for example, to use as a, a desktop background or something, then I would have my model in the middle, but enough background stuff happening on either side of her. So we got plenty of like basically real estate to work with. So you just do that under general, sorry, under your render settings and then general and just in the aspect ratio. So it didn't change anything else. It just slightly adjusted these sizings. And if you wanted to like change it and maybe you wanted that to be higher, you can absolutely change that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is bring in I'm going to bring in a background and then I'm going to bring in a model that I've already created so that I'm not starting from scratch. So I like to create my models first and then I just save them as an individual like DAS file, like give them a name or whatever it is. Then I can work on them at different times because like I said, this it can slow things down having a background in here. So I'm going to go across to smart content. Now it all depends on what you have, obviously. So I'm going to go to environments and just see what we have in here. And a lot of this is really hit and miss, like some stuff will really work, some stuff won't. I've got a ton of stuff here that I don't use. I've got other stuff that I use frequently. So I'm just going to have a little scroll through and see if I can find something that I think is pretty easy enough for us to work with in a tutorial. And that is Forest Glade. Just going to double click that. It's an environment and it's an entire set. So I'm just going to give that a double click and let that load up. Okay, that took absolutely ages <laughs> to open. Um, and it's just because there's a lot of stuff going on. So if it's you get a message saying Daz is not responding, don't just go click, 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 click and try and get it to respond. Just sit and wait and it will come back that probably took a couple of minutes to actually get that to load so now I can actually just using my mouse wheel I can scroll out and I can see I've got these trees in the background I've got rocks this meshy part here is I think that's the ground level so I can swing things around and you could do multiple renders from this one spot from, sorry, from this one environment, different angles, that's underneath, um, all sorts of things. So if you click on the little arrow here, you can see all the items that are basically included. So if you didn't want flowers, you could turn them off. Um, if you didn't want the stones, you could turn them off. That's what's called grouping, and I'll show you how to do that in a moment. Plants, dry leaves, and pines. And you can get rid of the trees altogether. But all of that stuff is just peeping through the background. But we, what you'll notice, if we just get rid of those, we don't have a sky. This, is, this will be actually be transparent, which is really good because then you can add your own sky in, in uh, Photoshop. So I'm pretty happy with this. And I'm just, I, like I said, I don't even play with this stuff too much. I, I like to use it like almost straight out of the box just to see what it would look like. So let's just have a look in iRay view to give you an idea. It lo obviously looks a bit fuzzy and as I leave it on iRay for longer and longer, that will clear up. Again, this is why I don't work in iRay view because it just <laughs> sucks the guts out of your computer. Um, but that looks really pretty and I could definitely see having a model in the middle here somewhere, you know, doing something. So that's what we're going to do. I'm just going to bring in a model to this scene. I haven't really thought about what I'm going to do here. So I'm just going to maybe bring the ground up a little bit. 
Um, so to bring a model in, like if you want to just start from scratch like and create her now absolutely you can do that and you just go to figures and you bring your model in what i'm just going to do is just close close that up and you can bring a model in like so and it's going to drop her in here somewhere but you're already seeing that this can take a lot of time um, it's just reading through all this stuff because it's got all this stuff on the screen it's taking forever now there she is down there, okay. Um, she's tiny. I'm not gonna zoom in because she's also nude. <laughs> so what I wanna do, I'm, I'm just gonna delete her because at this point she's just standing there again. She's got no clothes on, no posing, no hair. And so to mess around getting all that done while we've got the background already there, like it's just gonna be really slow, tedious, frustrating exercise. So I'm just gonna delete her out. And I'm going to bring in a model that I've already created. So she's all ready to go. All I have to do is put her in the scene. So again, to do that, you can click on this icon that merge an existing file. Or you can go file merge. And it's going to ask me to then go and find that file. And, you know, who do you want to use? And I think it's this one. I've got a messing around folder where I just save a heap of models that I've literally been messing around with she should come in with everything that she needs we can obviously still make changes to her because when i created the model i didn't create it with her with this background in mind okay my model is there um she's come in with a cauldron and there's also a camera attached to that as well so i'm just going to zoom in now and i'm just going to start playing with how i want things to appear I'm actually going to delete that camera because it's sort of, oh, no, let's, let's have a look at the camera view and see what we get. I will probably do that. That's actually not too bad. <laughs> That's actually not too bad. Um, what I want to do though is move her over here. I don't want, I'm just looking at the angle. So I'm just messing around with the angle now and I just want to bring her over, oops, over this way a little bit. And here, I think. And then what I want to do now is on the model, I'm just going to, on her head, is just lower her, oops, wrong way. Lower her head, I want her looking at us. Looking at the camera, that's actually not too bad. So let's have a look in iRay. Not sure if the cauldron will work um, because obviously like the cauldron is more for a room, I think. Not so much a forest, but I could be wrong. I just want to have a look before I start rendering. Actually, that looks okay, but would you notice just how dark it is? Which is why I always like to test in iRay. So, that actually, that was probably workable. Mm. So, let us go to render settings, to environment. Um, draw ground is off. So I'm just going to put it on. I'm not sure I would see her shadow. So that's normally my trick is I turn the ground on and then I can see where her shadow is falling. But I'm just going to try moving the dome around a bit and seeing if we get the light to shine on her face. We might need to have a play with some other options actually that could be it. it could be a setting for this um, environment so what I'm going to do is on the forest glade let's go back to that that was in environments just going to run a search on the word forest here it is okay it's got this thing called cameras, which 
only one of them is actually a camera these other ones are lights so I'm not really when I'm hovering over them I'm not seeing any difference so we're just gonna go with this one see what happens so sometimes you need to do a little investigating that's better we've got some light right now if we go back to render settings and we can see that it's changed a few things in here that's okay changed a lot of things so let us find where's the dome dome rotation here we go let's see if we can move it around because I do prefer the light to be on her face definitely not on her face there okay so the shadows because it's such a big scene I'm not getting automatic fast results there we go I think that's probably close enough to what I wanted to do now the fire is looking really odd down the bottom here um, but that is something that I would then fix up in Photoshop afterwards or you could quite simply turn the fire off it's just here actually that's probably better without the fire the lighting is not perfect but for this for these purposes I'm quite happy with this I'm just going to take it off of iRay because it's really <laughs> just sucking the life out of my machine so then what you would do is save the scene file save as scene I'm putting it in my messing around folder which in woods with cauldron is what I'm calling it just so that I can come back to it at a later date now because we did those light settings and it was about the render I just want to check that it didn't mess with my settings here too much all right I'm just going to take the quality down to a two now ordinarily when I when I do these what I do is I hide the model and see how when you hide the model all this other stuff stays behind like her hair her eyebrows um, the cauldron and everything so I'm just gonna click on the little eye and open it back up again what we want to do is group everything involved with the model so any props that you want to stay with the model or any like the models clothing all that sort of stuff if you highlight the model hold down your shift key and then highlight the last thing so in this case it's the fire because I want to keep that attached to the cauldron so I'm highlighted all of that if you come across to here this little plus sign with the hexagon type thing create a new group click on that name it and I just tend to just call it something really useful like model model and cauldron and just go accept now it's grouped everything together in your scene tab and so when you unclick the eye all of that's disappeared and you bring it back so that's how you can just render the things separately what I would also do at this point in time because um, the camera got caught up under here I'm actually going to delete it let me undo that go back to camera view because we had that all set up so that was silly there we go I'm going to leave that there so I don't can I ungroup that unparent camera there we go so I just like took that out of the group now I can yep perfect so now I can render the background if I want to just on its own and then I can actually turn the background off and turn the model back on they're in the same spot and render them separately so when you're doing a big scene render like this it pays to put everything together first and then render in different uh, different sections like two or more sometimes I do props things like that because you want to have the same perspective and angles with the 
background and all of that sort of stuff. So if you just like render this girl without bringing her into the scene and here's, here's the scene and then you just render this, but you could have your perspectives off. Is sort of what I'm getting around to saying. But what I'm going to do is just to show you quickly how it goes. This would be a long render, so I'm not going to do it all the way, but we are, we'll start it off and you'll just see it will take ages. When I first started using Daz and I was using my old Windows laptop, quite a few years old too, it was about five years old, and it would take me like up to 24 hours to render just one model on her own that was like of good enough quality. Um, to render something like this, a whole big scene would probably take me days. So back when I first started, I didn't do a lot of back basic backgrounds like scenes, environments, etc., because they just sucked the guts out of my laptop. Um, I use a big desktop computer now it's got a lot of grunt it's got a water cooler two hard drives all that sort of stuff um, pretty beefy uh, graphics card but um, as soon as you buy one they have a new one that comes out and want you to spend thousands of dollars updating it so I haven't so that's sort of dropped this down here if you're wondering what's happened because I've got a lovely big screen I like to have this little little thing you know telling me how much time I've got left now sometimes this rendering percentage doesn't work at all and it will show sitting at zero even though over here I can see that maybe my render is almost finished and it's looking really good but over here it's showing you know that it's not even doing anything it will tell me the time but here we are at a minute and a half in and nothing's popped up over here yet. And so I will I'll wait for it to pop up to show you, but then I'm going to cancel it. Um, I'm going to show you a different background in a minute just to show you an indoor example of what we can do. There are so many different scenes and environments and sets and things that you can buy. They can be quite tricky to make on your own. Okay. So here we go, it is started and we're like two minutes in. So it gives us a rough idea. You can slightly see in the background here, there's a little bit of transparency. So that gives me a bit of room to play with a different type of sky in Photoshop. I would just bring something in in the background and I would do something about this gloopy, gloopiness. But at least now my lighting matches. I mean, this girl's got a darker skin and red hair, so she, it, the model itself, she doesn't really fit the background. She was just an example that I was using. So she would look much better indoors in a witchy type environment. So I'm actually going to go ahead and cancel this now. So just over here, click on cancel. And what I'm going to do is bring, I'll just close this. You don't need to save it. I'm actually going to delete the background. And that still leaves me my model like so but now I'm just going to bring in a different background so back to smart content and I think there was one I've been trying to just do some research in between tutorials so I don't waste too much time mystic spells it's called um, it's an environment and it's like you'll see here it says set so that means like it's a scene it's an entire set so I'm just going to double click that and I'm actually using this as a background in I'm um, updating one of my book covers at the moment and I'm going to be using this. So now because she's like standing in the middle of a desk, I don't actually want this desk. So I'm wondering if it's grouped. Yeah, the mystic table, if I can just move. Excellent. Move that. I'm just moving that all sideways that can stay over there I might actually push it backwards closer to the bookshelves wait until it disappears into them and then go like that and I'll probably just push that over a little bit because I don't want that to be the main focus I want her to be the focus and with the windows here this is a good way for me to have a light source so I'm actually quite you know, there's not too much I'd do with that. I don't mind those being empty because I can add some smoky, swirly stuff because that would be part of my back cover. I could definitely 
trim off some of these edges. So that works really well. That was really easy actually. Um, sorry, wrong one. Go to eye ray and it is dark inside. I'm just having a look to see what's in here and what I'm going to do is just scroll out and see if there are change that to texture shaded scroll out to see what we've got in terms of walls and things oh I know what's happened I know why it's dark see how this is just a set these are like there's no front walls that's so that we can just scroll in like this it's not a whole house it's just a scene which is great so I'm just going to scroll back in I think what has happened in the render settings if I go to environment it's lost it's um there's usually a little picture here that has where it's drawing its light source from and because we changed all our render settings it's kind of messed this up we've got all this stuff that we didn't have before right to get myself out of this mess because I can't remember what all my old settings were what I'm going to do because this girl's already saved is I'm actually going to close out of this and not save it and I'm going to start again by bringing in my template so I'm just from here I'm going to go open re recent um, what was it? It was Daz standard template. I don't want to save these changes because my, um, my render settings got messed up there because those render settings work well with that forest background, but they're not working well inside. And because it was like, just click a button, all this stuff happened. I don't know enough about all the settings that it changed to be able to get out of it safely. This is why I like to do my model separately so that I can just save her exactly as I want her and then I can bring her into different things and if like in this occasion it's messed it up, it, nothing lost. It, only, it will only take me a minute to bring back this set and bring in my model but my render settings and my lighting will be back to how I expect them to be. So see here on the environment map there's this little um, it's a HDR file and it's pulling the lighting from that image. So when that disappears, you can put it back. So just hover over it on your own machine and write down in a notebook somewhere where that file is actually located so that if it ever gets switched out for a different little picture in there, you can get it back easily. What we're going to do here is actually just change back to a 16 by 9. And I'm just going to put it at front because that's what I like to do. So what we'll do is we'll do it, um, bring in the set because that's where we are. So we can get this set up again first. And then we'll just bring that same model straight back in. Okay, so this table I already know, the Mystic table, I don't want that front and center. I want the model because she's got a cauldron. So I'm just going to push that backwards until it hits the wall and then just bring it forward a little bit beautiful scroll in now what I'm going to do is this one is merge an existing file click um, which in woods oh no that was the whole file this is why it's really important to um, name things appropriately okay here she is so I'm just going to scroll in we can actually go to the camera view because it was that's what it was saved with before. So I'm just going to again make those adjustments that I made earlier. Just need to pull her out a bit because I'm going to lose the top of her head. Oop, that way but I don't want it sort of that angle. I want to be right in front of her. Okay, so what I'm going to have to do is actually change her angle. So let's see if I can drag that down the bottom. I don't know where that went. 
Right, let's do undo. We're going to group her again. Oops. Hit the wrong button on my keyboard. We're going to group her. So that I can move her. So I think I want to line up my background how I want it first. So I want it more like this and front on. I want it like that. I want that as a light source. So now I can actually, whoops. Go back to perspective view. Um, get my model. Sorry, now I've got to redo that because I forgot I was on camera view. Go down like this, bring it down so we can get the floor. Get over a little bit. Now get my model and drag her over. And I can actually, or I think it's this one. Nope, not that one. Just trying to get her to turn a bit. It's a lot of fiddling around. I don't want to spend too much more time, <laughs> too much more time fiddling with this. So um, I can just see now. Depending on how much of that cauldron we want to get into it, which is probably that's enough. And I'm just going to bend her head. Murphy's Law, I always go the wrong way first. And I would add magic and sparkles and stuff like that in Photoshop. I'm just going to turn off the fire. Now, if we have a look at it in iRay, oops, get my mouse off of it. We've got much better lighting. I wonder if we played with the render settings, and this is all about playing around, is the dome rotation. If we started playing with that, oh, I saw something, it got really dark. Because there's no front on the front of this scene. There's no like wall. Well, that didn't work out so well, so let's go back the other way. We can always add actual lights to the scene, but um, you have to actually purchase purchase those lights to get them to work. Here we go, the lights coming back. And then it's gone again. So it's probably around here. I should have written it down before I started playing with things. Tip number two. Anyways, we are going to stop playing around with this. I'm quite happy with how that looks because um, I can actually enlarge that more in Photoshop for a cover. So I'm actually going to change it back to texture shaded. I'm not going to save this one because I'm actually not going to use it, but if you click on render and I'll just show you how that starts to appear. And here she is. She's starting to come through a little bit faster than the last one, but the lighting on this suits the model a whole lot better. You'll also notice the um, little potions and candles and stuff in the background are all glowing. So that's already set up within the scene. So when you're creating scenes, a lot of these props you can actually move yourself. So getting it all set up like this, can you imagine putting all these books in here one at a time individually or your candles and your skulls and whatnot can be a lot of work and getting it all to sit properly can be really challenging. So I recommend just starting with a pre-purchased scene to begin with until you get the feel for things and then start moving stuff around. But before you render it, put a model into the scene, even if you delete her afterwards, just to step um, to check on your perspectives and like your angles and stuff like that to make sure that your finished model, when you put it all together, is going to look the same. 
like it's, it's all going to come together properly like I said I don't normally render all of this as one like I would render her separately and then the background separately and then pull them together in Photoshop because that way I can actually do stuff around the edges and of her add some backlighting all of that sort of some rim lighting sorry all of that sort of stuff thanks and not have to you know worry about having to cut her out of this image and it also if you do it separately it enables you to maybe you wanted to move her over a little bit more you know you could move her anywhere along this sort of aspect and it's not going to make any difference to lighting or anything like that because now that we've we know that that works well together yeah it's not an issue i hope that makes sense i have to it's really difficult for me to record these videos with such a or with all of this scene going on in the background because daz is sucking the life out of my computer and i'm recording at the same time all right i'm going to wrap this one up so that's just like really basic on what i use to you know start my scenes off i don't do a lot of scene building itself in daz i'm slowly getting better at it but i'm still learning myself so <laughs> so forgive me for any any errors or if you find a better way of doing something fantastic let us all know all right thanks as always for watching <laughs>